the last thing to, to kind of talk about is sort of the post-sales experience. And we did this, uh, we did this experiment in, in 2000. We were about to launch the product. It would have a price. So before that, it was just you know, a free beta. And we had all these leads in the, in, in the pipeline, if you will. We had people that came to our website. right? They would just find us. And, uh, and you know, our sales reps were calling on them. We said, look, this is what we'll do. We're about to start charging for it. But if you sign up for today, we'll give it to you for six months right, for free. And, of course, they said, okay, that sounds like a no-brainer. Why don't you sign me up? And we signed up. We cleared out the pipeline. We added about 200 customers to, uh, to the mix, right? Not, you know, not paying, but 200 customers. And we watched them because what happened was the sales guys would move on and they would look at the next prospect and the next deal, especially with these free guys that are you know, not generating commissions for them for six months. They would focus on these other things. And so, you know, again, you know, no, no surprise, um, we're a website, so we can kind of watch these things. Right? And so we kind of watched what the adoption level was like, and it was anemic. And so I don't remember the exact percentages, but you know, it's probably order of magnitude around 10% of the companies actually used it. And, uh, and at the six months, you kind of know what happened. That 10% uh, of the 200 users, or 200 customers, actually wound up buying the service, and the other 90% just kind of went away. Right? And, uh, and so that is, uh, was, a, was a clear lesson that said, you know, with this model, it's a little different. Because in, in the software industry, in the 90s, we're trained to say, you know, you close a deal, you book a commission, you drop off a CD, and that's pretty much it, right? I mean, there's some maintenance revenue and so on and so forth, but it's up to the customer at that point. And so then at that point, you say, okay, well, let me sell you some post-sale service. Let me introduce you to Accenture, right? Let me introduce you to our consulting organization, right? Well, you're not really using the application, but you're kind of stuck with it. It's just shelfware, so why don't we put together a training class for you, right? That's kind of the mindset of the time. But the mindset was completely different. Because right? they would just say, well, you know, I'm just going to turn off the service, you know, thanks, but I'm not going to really, really continue it. And if you look at the heavy cost of sales to kind of acquire that customer, if they were to stick around for a month or two, right, then, then, then it does not become a profitable proposition. And so the whole post-sales environment has been critical for us. And we have parts of our organization that we've created right, with titles like customer success manager and so on and so forth. Right? Uh, we have concepts like uh, adoption ladders that just don't exist in the software industry because we really need to drive usage of the application. And so we have a set of metrics that we track per customer, and we have eight years of history to say, well, what are really the right sort of metrics where you can kind of tell that a customer's going to stick around, right? And you can kind of tell when, well, they're not really not going to renew at their point of renewal, whether it's one month or one year, whatever it happens to be. And so the whole post-sales model becomes even more critical. And if you run the numbers, right, if you kind of just model out this thing on an Excel spreadsheet and you plug in a variable called attrition, which is, you know, what percent of your subscriber base leaves you, right, every single month. And then you also plug in, you know, a factor for growth, right, which in the software industry tends to be more around salespeople, right, how many salespeople are going to have and how much bookings are going to close and so on and so forth. You find that uh, manipulating the attrition number is a much, much higher, right, you know, what's the, uh, what's the term, sort of a sensitivity, if you will, to, uh, to the growth number, Right? And it's just a huge difference whether your attrition is 1% a month versus, say, 5% a month. Right? 5% times 12 is 60%. Two-thirds of your customer base is leaving you every year. And you know, then you just can't, you just can't run fast enough to, to kind of keep up with it. And so you see us, and a lot of what that, that is a lot of what we do. We have a whole website for best practices, and we do a lot of things that drive people to best practices. And we drive customers you know, to kind of talk to each other. And we really try to get them to the point where they're successful with the application. Because in an organizational setting, once you're successful rolling out an application, people are using it, right? The organization has wrapped its processes around it. Then it becomes harder to unplug, right? Then it becomes a self-sustaining engine. And um, if you've worked in an organization for a while, you know that there are processes in the organization that seem to live on forever, right? Because you can't seem to do anything about it. And, um, and, and so it is with applications, right? Once, once you've got an organization's processes wrapped around it, uh, you pretty much have a, a good point of sustainability. But you've got to get that company to, to, to that level.